Hello and welcome to this film which is the last of the films about the higher level bonding topic in the IB chemistry course. This deals with some examples of resonance so it's dealing with specific examples of the uh, these, this thing that we were looking at in the previous film where we looked at resonance and delocalization. What we're hopefully going to be able to do by the end of this particular film is to draw resonance structures for a number of different molecules and decide whether the electrons in those molecules can delocalize and hopefully we'll actually consolidate what we did on hybridization as well at the same time. Okay, first of all let's look at an ethanoate ion and let's try drawing a Lewis structure for it or an electron dot diagram. Now by the time you've done the organic topic you'll know straight away that the ethanoate ion has that formula and if you drew a Lewis diagram for it you'd probably be able to figure out that it has this structure here as kind of shown here. We've got a single bond to one of the oxygens, a double bond to the other, we've got a lone pair here uh, lone, two lone pairs there, three lone pairs here, and that leaves us with a negative charge on this oxygen. You can look a little bit more carefully at uh, why this oxygen has a negative charge. There's two electrons here, two electrons there, two electrons there, and one of its electrons here being shared with one of carbon. So in other words, oxygen's kind of got seven electrons here, but it starts, oxygen normally only has six, so that accounts for the extra electron and negative charge. Okay. I could equally well draw this negative charge on that oxygen and put the double bond between those two atoms there. Okay, And the way I show that is by putting a resonance arrow in, so I'm saying I could draw this molecule a different way with bonds between different atoms. I'd have the same bonds down there, but I'd have a double bond to that oxygen and I'd have a single bond to that one and the negative charge would be over here. Okay, so they're my two resonance forms, and that shows that these electrons that are forming this negative charge and this double bond are kind of, well, again, it's not realistic to say that they're spending as much time here as they are there, but they're kind of somewhere in between the two. Okay, so in other words, if we drew an average of what we've got there, then we'd have half a, a one and a half bonds there one and a half bonds here and the negative charge would be spread right over that entire those entire three atoms so we'd end up looking like this so this would bar this would be our diagram that shows how the electrons delocalize in this ion okay and the negative charge is spread all the way over that end of the molecule okay so they're the resonance forms of the ethanoate ion and where the electrons would delocalize to we're going to do a very similar thing with the carbonate ion, except here the resonance forms have already been drawn for us. You should hopefully be able to come up with a Lewis diagram for the carbonate ion. Okay, But if you did that, some people might draw the carbon-oxygen double bond there, some might put it there, some might put it there. And the oxygen with two lone pairs would be the one that was double bonded, and the other two would have three lone pairs. Okay, now we can think about what the average of all those is, right? And instead of having two bonds and one bond each, then all the carbon oxygen bonds would be one and a third bonds. Okay, so we'd kind of had the electrons delocalized over the entire molecule, and there'd be a two minus charge here. Okay, so um, that shows us how the electrons are able to move around or to delocalize in this molecule, what I thought it might be useful to do quickly would be to just have a look at the hybridization of these two atoms, the carbon and the oxygen, and to think about how the orbitals that are being used might explain how this delocalization is taking place. Okay? Now we've got 120 degrees around the carbon, we've also got 120 degrees around the oxygen. This means they're using sp2 hybrids. Okay, so here's our carbon with its three, because remember there are three sp2 hybrids, and it's going to be forming bonds with the three oxygen atoms. All right, the oxygen atoms are also sp2 hybridized, so there's one, two, three sp2 hybrid orbitals on the oxygens. Okay, I'm just going to concentrate on this particular one here. There's a lone pair in that sp2 hybrid, there's a lone pair in that sp2 hybrid, okay, and there's a electron in here overlapping with this electron here making the sigma bond. Okay. In addition to that we've got these unused p orbitals 
Okay, I'm deliberately doing this quite quickly because we've seen it before and you can always watch it again. Okay, we've got these unused p orbitals and there's going to be a sideways overlap here which is going to give us a pi bond. Okay, and what any one of these resonance forms shows is this pi bond in a particular place. All right, but in reality, every one of these oxygens would have a spare p orbital. And so all of these p orbitals could overlap with one another. Okay, so in other words, the electrons that were in these p orbitals could spread right over the entire molecule. Now, don't worry about explaining delocalization in these terms in an exam. It's just something I'm going through that hopefully kind of brings resonance and delocalization together with what we did about um, hybrid orbitals. Just to finish up with, um, when we're kind of saying, okay, if in order for resonance forms to be drawn, they have to kind of make sense, or in order for electrons to delocalize, you have to be able to draw resonance forms. Let's just see what happens if you try drawing resonance forms here. So maybe moving that double bond like we did with the ethanoate ion. So we'd show a resonance arrow. We'd have CH3 down this end. And now the double bond um, would have moved over here. So we'd have a double bond there and we'd have H there and we'd have O over there. Now the trouble with this is although, uh, remember I was saying earlier, you can't just draw any old resonance structure you like. The trouble with this is that oxygen has formed three bonds. Oxygen doesn't really like doing that, okay? Because oxygen is a group six element, it likes forming two bonds, as we can see in both these cases here. Okay, so this resonance structure you'd have to decide in an exam, that doesn't really make sense. Resonance isn't possible, or it's not possible to draw resonance forms of ethanoic acid. So there is no resonance and there's no delocalization. Even though in the ethanoate ion, which looks quite similar, I suppose, to ethanoic acid, you can draw it. Okay? So that is the end of the bonding topic. And I suppose we've finished with a couple of things, hybridization and resonance, that are really quite tough. Hopefully, uh, you feel like you could draw resonance structures for different molecules and uh, you could use those resonance structures or the uh, impossibility of drawing them to decide whether um, electrons can delocalize or not. Um, and hopefully you feel pretty confident with the stuff we've done on hybridization. If not, if there's any questions you want to ask, I mean, well, I suppose one of the key things here is to practice a few problems, but if you've got any questions you want to ask or any comments you want to make, please let me know as soon as possible by either posting a comment on YouTube or coming to see me when you get a moment.